The Pint of Science, brought to you by the Faculty of Science, Charles University in Prague, Department of Chemistry, sponsored by the Pilsner Brewery. So first I have to stress that I'm really extremely honored that I'm the first biologist. <laughs> there. And it's really a tough situation for me not to spoil moment for the other ones. So and as a part of not, not spoiling, I improvised a little bit uh, with the first slide. I don't want to talk about the aging and about the micro microchimerism, but I don't have I have to react on an aging story because I have a quite simple explanation or kind of rule for mankind in terms of aging because we have a very special natural experiment going on and it's a distinction between woman and the man standing behind without no, with no cells exchange between the fetus and the particle personality so there is a quite important difference between the men and, and, and women probably the 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 men <laughs> I will not be a political correct I, I'm, I'm a feminist by heart and as a biologist I can be I, I cannot be uh, different from feminists because there are so many reasons why the, why the women are the are the stronger <laughs> more complicated of course <laughs> I, of course I don't want to spend too much time on the topic, but you can see very interesting phenomenon that uh, during the, the pregnancy, the, the cells are exchanged between the mother and the fetus. And what's amazing that the mother is inhabited by a young cells from a fetus, which can replace the old cells and re 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 rejuvenate the whole body. And maybe, and it's the statistics, statistics shows the, 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 the difference that it's probably the reason why the women live 10% longer not the other issues which were uh, published as the most important so it's only reflection the, the, the aging story that maybe some other explanation could be behind the, the longevity uh, of course I, I mentioned that I'm honored as a first biologist on a stage uh, I was I selected four different topics uh, to, to talk about and I decided for the most biological and I'm a little bit worried about the most chemical one because it's the topic I'm working on. It's somehow challenging the pure chemist's view that they can do the most efficient drug development doing the the combination of chemistry, for example. We are doing, we are searching for biologically active compounds, looking into the fungi, into the microorganism, reflecting the two billion years of chemical wars between the microorganisms, within the biofilms and competing each together. And the best tool to, to, to be the most efficient is to make a versatile, efficient, multi-targeted weapon so we capitalize from these chemicals in a, in a, in a, in a, in a pharmaceutical industry a lot so so I, I, I worry a little bit to to face the chemist auditorium which spending so much time with with these intellectual uh, equilibristics <laughs> synthesizing never synthesized in nature hoping that it will work for the for the biology that's it <laughs> I, I'm, a, I'm trying to be a devil advocate and i will i i i don't want to i don't want to be honest too much and i will try to play the biologist card and hopefully provoke many questions <laughs> later on I was looking for right, organic chemistry, but boring chemistry. <laughs> <laughs> I was impressed. I was very impressed with the boring chemistry. Whatever. <laughs> 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 the other issue, the other issue was 
uh, auto fighting. Nobel Prize, Japanese card played on audience. I think it's very interesting issue. It's a longevity issue. It's still very much linked to the chemistry. Uh, the other issue was the microchimerism. I was asked by by Jana to, to, to join the, the club, and I tried to play the feministic card, and <laughs> and again then I I got email from from the inventor or co-inventor of the of the of the club. So okay, I decided to go for something else for. To share with you my feeling uh, that we live in a biology research at a momentum maybe Americans felt in 1969, like landing on a moon. Something very special. When you ask American, what you did when the Armstrong stepped on a the moon, they remember by scratch. I was drinking at the year, I was just coming from, from work. I, I have a feeling that in biology, we live in such kind of a moment. And I would like to share with you uh, that type of feeling. It's not that we develop one kind of, of methodology behind, or kind of knowledge. But the behind it is that we, we in one time, in one time, met uh, or developed several methodologies uh, which can uh, help us to ask questions we never dreamt to ask uh, before that we as we visualists i think we are not limited with the methodology we are far behind the methodology and we should be pushed to ask the real question according to the methodology so i have a more landing feeling these days not these days, maybe two years. And I would like to share with you the mix of the methodologies which are behind the revolution in, in biology, but not only in biology. I think it's a revolution in biomedicine. And it's a revolution bringing a lot of ethical issues. And maybe that will be the most interesting for you as, as a chemist. So what are the, the main developments? It's... Uh, it's um, ability to get a cell from your body, our body, differentiate itself, and introducing expression of only five genes, create a pluripotent cell which can differentiate in any cell in any cell of our body. So that's a big thing. It has a big potential for regenerative medicine for aging issues. So one thing is to starve for life. The other one is to live, live quick and then get replaced your your more damaged, most damaged uh, body parts. And that will be the, the, the topic for my talk. So that's also one, one thing. The other thing is that, and it's quite old, that we can play with the genome. We can replace the genes, we can, we can make a so-called knockouts make a mutation in, in, in genes which end up with a non-functional protein with lack of a phenotype with some feature which reflects many of our inherited species. So uh, 20 years of that type of research created mouse trails for each of gene being knockout and we know more or less function more or less of course I see that Jan Konanka is shaking his hands. It's we know for, for some. There are we built already now in Prague so called mouse clinics. Mouse clinic which is not for healing the, the mouse brought by the best ex people, but to really test the, the phenotypes of knockouts. And we know functions for some, we know that many knockouts are without any phenotype, but we can cross them, we can prepare double knockouts, triple knockouts, knock out the whole family of genes to, to dissect the redundancies. So the take home message is that if freezers or really tested in, in these mouse facilities are all the genes from, from the mouse genome, of course, with some reflection to the human gene. And we know quite well what are the genes responsible, responsible for example, for development particle organs. 
And we create, can create a mouse without liver. We can create a mouse without pancreas. We can even create a mouse without the brain, brainless mutants. Uh, and that's it. So that's the, that technology is the, the 10 years, 20 years old history of the, of the research ended up in many successful PhD uh, studies and, and uh, PhD excellence. Of course, many of them didn't succeed, it. most of them, those with no phenotype for the, for the genotype. That's a, that's a big sphere. So, uh, another technology I would like to stress, and is the fundamental one, is their so-called CRISPR-Cas technology. It's something stolen from the immune system of Archibacteria. Something nobody uh, thought it will work for other systems, but we can get something from Archibacteria translated to, to eukaryotic system, even the human system, and it works and can make a revolution for, for, for biology and uh, biomedical technologies, whatever. So we have E3, uh, understanding of the mouse development, we can play with the genomes, we, uh, including uh, the, 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 my, my feeling about the moon landing is we should be aware that last year was published the first paper about human editing, editing of a human genome on a germline, of course, prepared in a way that it can pass into the real newborn because it was made on a triploid by a Chinese group, but it was proven, the principle of, of proven that using a CRISPR-Cas technology, we can edit human genome and uh, heal the DNA disease called thalassemia. It's one of the uh, hemoglobin-based diseases. So proof of principle that we can heal the human genetically uh, dependent disease, it is there. And uh, I would like to talk about the humanized mouse model because it's something where the science is moving very quickly ahead. And of course, these mice didn't look like dead mice, no, no dress. You can find the difference between the normal mouse and the mouse filled with the human genes, uh, replaced, the, the, the mouse gene replaced with the, with the mouse gene or with human regulatory sequences, or with human cells. It's still the mouse, and it works well as an animal test tube to test the, our hypothesis. So what was done with the mice, it's incredible. But the mouse, some, 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 some biologists call the mouse as a non-mammal. Uh, it's a pity that at the beginning, when the, when the mouse model was developed. There was no question to the zoologist. What would be the best animal to test the human-based hypothesis, physiologically linked or disease linked? Because the mouse is very, very special from point of view of physiology, immunology, and so on. So at the beginning, we selected one of the worst species to develop into the model organism. But we invested so much time and so big effort and so many lives of scientists that we don't have a way back into the mice. We know perfectly the genome, we edit it perfectly, we have so many knockouts. No, the mouse is the model, but the CRISPR Cas made a big difference. We are dependent on the mouse because we had a so called embryonic stem cells. So we were able to do the Muchar Genesis knockout, knock-in technology on a mouse because it didn't work for more species. We invested so much in mouse that we found so many tricks how to, how to deal with the mouse. Uh, to make the long story short, introducing the CRISPR-Cas technology, crossing the, the threshold of probability, making the genetic change, we now can switch to any species and can do experimentation with any animal model. And it's a big, tremendous, fundamental change in a, in a biology. So it's part of it on a moonlight landing. And I would like to, to, to jump to the, to, to, the, to the pick, because as was mentioned, 
there was this beautiful lady living 121 years, but you saw by the face difference between 20 years old lady and 121, and uh, applying some physiological phenotyping on the old, old lady, we can easily pick up a tissue or organ which will be the rate limiting or the, the lately uh, responsible for the death of the lady. So we are living longer, we would like to live longer, we would like to live longer healthy. So there is a tremendous demand to help to that to that feeling or to, to that demand. And one one substantial help would be to replace the spare parts. Of course, there is a need for transplantation for those suffering from cystic cell fibrosis, for example, for the for the lungs, or for those with, with lung disease, with, with inherited genetic disease. But still, there is maybe one fifth of this day demand for transplantation. The other one is the elderly people who wants to live longer out there to get the young. Young, young organs to survive long. So uh, we don't have enough uh, transplant, transplants for transplant. In the United States, 400,000 people, people die per year for lung associated diseases. At least one third would be cured by lung transplantation. Nobody wants to share his or her lungs with the with, with, uh, transplant is the recipient. So, I don't want to... Okay. So, there is a high need for transplant. For long, pig is the animal. Very wisely selected as an optimal organ donor for, for a human. Uh, of course, immunology works. So, transplanting the liver from a, from a pig to a human immediately ends up in a rejection the blood clots and in seconds it's it's gone the recipient dies so it was a big effort including Craig Venter to start the, the, the scientific enterprise in that issue to make a humanized pick it's quite easy we have a technology so we have a not single genetically modified pick, but I think the world record is 13 different genes in a pig humanized so replaced for a humanized variant or at least making the pig tissue more similar to a human but still when we transplant the, the, the pig tissue to the human we are still in a trouble and we have a lifelong anti-immune system uh, tracks uh, suppressing the immune system so it's not the way probably we can go for for the future. So uh, and there is another another issue with the pig. What do you think is the most limiting the trans using to, for the use of, of pig transplants to the to the human? It's the not the immunology these days. Size. It's not the size. Is interesting the size, it's not an issue. You can transplant to a small kid, the adult kidney, and it will work. The problem are the biases because the, the pig has its own retrovirus sitting in the genome, and a, and a, and a retrovirus behaving very strangely. Uh, when you mix a pig cells with a human cells in a cell culture, you have a 100% chance that the human cells get the pig's retroviruses. And you can open a Pandora's box for a new zoonosis. So that's a big fear because the worst disease, infectious diseases, are coming from the animals. So that was the limiting, rate limiting step for developing the, 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 the technology. Until that man, and it's about the, the science, that the big people are doing the real change. It's the George and Church and so-called Church Army. The man is sitting at Harvard Medical School at the Department of Genetics. It's a dreamy site of postdocs. 
for the life. I think everyone of us would love to have so many people devoted to a project. So he did, he's at one of the fathers of molecular genetics and genetic application. So what he did, and it looks like it's a piece of cake, finally technologically, that he applied the CRISPR-Cas technology for on a pick and on a pick retroviruses. And it's amazing, by one shot, he erased 62 retroviruses sitting in a genome. And he prepared by one shot, by one genetic modification, by one experimentation, uh, retroviral free pick. Imagine that. So now the whole field is boosting. But it's not the main topic I would like to talk. I would like to join the topic to another topic on technology. I will spend two minutes with something we as a biologist love. To have a tool to see in a cells or in tissues or in whole animals or in plants, in fungi, uh, biological processes in vivo in situ. So for sure you, you heard about the green foods and protein. Something stolen from a, from uh, hydrozoa and uh, we can transplant the gene to the bacteria, to, to Cyanogravity cellulose, to Drosophila, to, to rabbit, to mouse, and we can get a shining animal. Uh, shining, of course, when we, uh, when we use uh, blue light to excite the fluorescence. Okay, worms are yeah, close to worms, but <laughs> and, uh, we have a gene we can put into the, into the organism and get a 100% solar penetrance. So, that's a beautiful technology because now we can study uh, processes in living cells being close to in vivo, to, to, to real, to real uh, cellular behavior and tissue behavior and uh, rewriting the textbooks more or less with, with that technology. So, and now we are coming to the to the strawberry on a, on a, on a cake. Uh, and we will play, for sure, a, again, a Japanese card. I, I have special feelings about Japanese science, so many little prizes. Uh, whatever. That man, Hiromitsu Nakaguchi, tried something what would, in many other brains, end up just from scratch. That would never work what you are trying to, to perform. What we, what we uh, combined, he took a pluripotent, induced pluripotent cells from a rat. You can see that the rabbit took, of course, that is a green fluorescent, a shining uh, rat. And viable, you can buy even, not for your, as a, as a pet, not for your research. And you can derive from skin cells, for example, from the fibroblast polypotent induced cells, induced polypotent cells. So that's one thing. The other thing that he used a mouse strain, which was not able to differentiate pancreas. So normally the knockout strain for the PDX1 gene was without pancreas, suffering, of course, there type one and we can we have in a library of mouse strains many of similar ones lacking particular organs or very crippled organ organization so what he made so he used the pdx1 minus minus mosaic for the for the gene uh, mouse strain and he injected into the early developmental stage into the blastocyst red induced pluripotent cells asking where these cells will home where these cells will hide find their homes to which cell types these cells will differentiate and it showed up that the result is dreamy science fiction one he found that in a belly of the mouse he found a super shining organ of a red origin and the organ was what is normally missing from the knockout. 
and it was the pancreas. Well, that was uh, something completely nobody expected that the result, and it was published in Cell, and it was a big breakthrough. It was repeated with other organs, and now we are coming to the to the last slide. I prepared this seven slides. Uh, the last slide. <laughs> And the uh, same man, Hiromitsu Nakaguchi, when you Google him, you can find as one of the first hits multi million grant from a Japanese grant agency for making a, uh, making a pig, making a genetically modified pig according to the mouse knowledge, pig which is not normally able to develop heart, lungs, intestine, not brain. <laughs> and of course, to to uh, play with uh, with uh, with the pluripotent introduced uh, human cells, and I'm sure that you coined all things together. So he thinks uh, in interviews he responds in five years I will have I will have a crowd of of things. Where I can apply the patient-derived induced pluripotent cells to create a patient's own organ for transplantation. Development of a, of a pig is about one year. In a one year, we can get an organ for a chronic, chronically uh, ill person. Uh, of course, it's not easy to translate the knowledge from a mouse to a pig because there is a slight difference in, in gene regulation. But he's on the way, and he, what I know, he's able to produce uh, pancreas free pigs. Uh, diabetes type 1 is a chronic disease. Of course, you, you can wait for one year for your own pancreas to be translated, transplant, transplanted from, from, a, from a pig. And uh, of course, it's a question: What is the reality? The, the obstacles behind. One major obstacle is that what you have to transplant to the human is not the human material, but the vasculature, namely, is of the pig origin. So still, there will be an immunological problem. But using the 13 times humanized pig, try which is trying to make pig as human-like as possible in combination with, with a pig where the endogenous retroviruses are erased out from the genome. I think it's a big hope that that will revolutionize the, the human therapeutics, that will boost the longevity for the people. And of course, who is challenging this I know from the discussion most the, the technology are the pharmaceutical companies because these are getting most revenues from chronic deceased patients. But whatever uh, will be the result, I think it's a fascinating crossover of three different technologies. CRISPR-Cas, classical genetic editing creating the knockouts, and uh, development in differentiation, molecular mechanisms, behind the differentiation and creating of an induced pluripotent cells. And it was a small introduction into the, into the biology and hopefully I didn't spoil the stage for the other biologists to come in a future. <laughs>